The next thing we're going to talk about are thunderstorms, and thunderstorms are one of the most dangerous types of weather for pilots. Now luckily, this day and age, we have a pretty good radar that should keep you safe from those uh, thunderstorms, but obviously you need uh, proper training and need to understand if the radar is um, up to date or if there is some sort of delay. Sometimes radars can be up to 15 minutes delay from what you actually see on your screen to what is really occurring. But anyway, um, there's three stages of thunderstorms, and the first stage is called the cumulus stage. The cumulus stage is the building stage, and you usually can see the thunderstorm build if you just watch it and stare at it. You'll see it actually grow before your eyes. And in the cumulus stage, there are only updrafts. And these clouds can build at uh, a rate of 3,000 feet per minute. So 3,000 feet per minute. And the little airplanes that you're going to be training in climb at five to a thousand feet per minute on good days. So there's no way that you could outclimb one of these uh, building thunderstorms. So if you're above the clouds, in the, particularly in the summertime, and you look off in the distance and you can see those clouds starting to grow, you already want to think about a backup plan because by the time you get there, you'd probably be engulfed in this cloud. So cumulus is uh, predominantly updrafts. And the mature stage is when we have up and down drafts. So we have all this moisture carried up, and as it goes higher and higher and higher, and the, the water molecules get larger and larger, and they go up, and the temperature drops, so the, a lot of the water molecules can become hail, you know, as size as the size of uh, golf balls or softballs. And once the cloud can't hold that moisture anymore, then it falls back down. So that's why we have the up, down, up drafts and the down drafts in a mature stage of a thunderstorm. Uh, very often, the winds aloft are very strong and they'll blow the top of your thunderstorm over. And they call that the anvil. This is a little dangerous if you flew underneath this because as the moisture was carried up, up, up and became hail balls, then those might be blown over. And if you flew underneath an anvil, it's possible, even though you're not in the cloud, that you could be uh, pelted with hail. By definition, the mature stage of the thunderstorm is rain at the Earth's surface. But as all this moisture was carried up above, and it gets too heavy and it starts to fall back down, then all this air gets pushed down first. And so the air gets forced out of the thunderstorm first, and then the rain follows behind that. And that downward force of air, they call a microburst. That is very dangerous. One of the reasons it's so dangerous is because you can't see it. The, the rain hasn't come out yet, and you just see the base of a cloud, and the wind is invisible. Unless you happen to be near water, where you can see the the wind blow across the water or maybe a freshly plowed field and you see a lot of dust kick up suddenly. Or if you're at a larger airport, they have machinery that will detect these, um, these strong microbursts and also known as wind shear. So at some airports, uh, they have LLWAS and that is Low Level Wind Shear Advisory System. And it's a little machine that's placed uh, beside the runway that would detect wind shear. But anyways, um, the rate at which that this wind can come down out of the thunderstorm can be as strong as 6,000 feet per minute. And we definitely can't outclimb that. Really, no airplane can outclimb that, I don't think. So if you were attempting to land at an airport that's underneath this thunderstorm as it's um, reaching its mature stage, and you attempted to come in on final, and let's say that your indicated airspeed was 80, and you suddenly got this burst of wind in front of you, and let's say that the wind the gust was about 40 knots. So what happens if you're flying at 80 and you suddenly get a 40 knot headwind? Well, the airplane flies really well, because remember, the airplane flies because the wind comes over our wings. So our indicated airspeed would go up to 120, indicated airspeed, 120, and the airplane would fly really well. 
Now you wouldn't go very fast across the ground, of course. You'd only be going maybe 40 across the ground, but your, um, your actual performance of the airplane would improve. So because you're trying to come in and land, you most likely would reduce the throttle. But what happens when you get right over the runway is you get this strong, strong downdraft that you most likely cannot climb out of. You can't go around out of that. But let's say you were lucky enough to climb out of that. And you're climbing out at 80 knots again. That's your indicated airspeed. And you suddenly got a burst of wind from behind you. What does that do to your indicated airspeed? Well, in this scenario, because the wind is coming from behind you, your indicated airspeed would drop and only be 40. I don't think your airplane flies very well if you're only going 40. So if this didn't push you down, this definitely would push you down. So be very, very, very careful of a microburst. It comes out before the actual rain comes out. Now, the other hazards associated with um, the thunderstorm, obviously, is you can have very, very intense rain. And because you have updrafts and downdrafts, it creates a lot of friction in the air. So the up and down drafts can create the static electricity. So we'll get the lightning. And do you know what thunder is? Uh, thunder is the, uh, basically the rapid expansion of that hot, hot air from the lightning. Um, as that air expands so rapidly, it slaps into the cold air. And then that's what you hear is the thunder. So could we have thunder without lightning? No. Uh, so our hazards are strong downdrafts, um, rain, like really, really hard rain, uh, lightning, hail, uh, crazy wind shear up in the cloud, and also the moisture that gets carried up, up, up in the cloud. Um, it can be uh, temperatures below freezing, but the water has not frozen yet because either it was carried up so quickly there wasn't time for it to freeze, or they say that in order for it to freeze it has to adhere to condensation nuclei. Basically they're saying that it needs some kind of dirt particle for the moisture to adhere to in order to um, uh, turn into to ice. There's a couple other types of clouds you want to be aware of with the thunderstorms, and they don't really quiz you on this in your books, but I think it's important to note. If you ever see a cloud, a thunderstorm cloud, and you see a boot-like shaped cloud protruding from the base of that cloud, um, what you're actually seeing is where the incoming air is condensing into visible moisture and where the cloud is first being formed. Well, what does that mean to you as a pilot? That even though you may see rain coming out of this cloud, that this storm is still building. There's still more potential for more intense wind shear and hail and lightning and everything else. And this cloud is called a wall cloud. So if you see a wall cloud associated with that thunderstorm and it kind of protrudes out from the base, you know, be, be very careful and keep your distance. And speaking of distance, the FAA says that you should stay at least 20 miles, 20 nautical miles from a thunderstorm. But I think you should ask yourself, well, how big is that thunderstorm and what type of airplane are you flying in? Because if you have a thunderstorm that's uh, topped out at 60 or 70,000 feet even, um, you may want to stay 30 or 40 miles away from that. Whereas if you have a thunderstorm where tops are 20,000 feet, there wouldn't be as much danger associated, and you, you may want to just go with the 20 nautical miles that the FAA recommends. Um, the other type of cloud you may see is, uh, it's called a mama cloud, and it's this type of pooching pockets that you may see underneath a thunderstorm. And for a pilot, that's a, another sign of extreme turbulence, so you would not want to fly near that. Uh, the third stage of a thunderstorm is the dissipating stage. And the dissipating stage is where you can see the top of the cloud kind of give way or start to just sink in on itself. And this stage is predominant by downdrafts. The hazards associated would just be maybe poor visibility at the surface due to all of the rain. So they call this the dissipating stage. So we have cumulus, mature, and dissipating. Cumulus is updrafts. Mature is up and downdrafts, where most of the hazards are there. 
and the dissipating stage is uh, all downdrafts.